Hello friends and subscribers, welcome back to Daniel's Tech World here on YouTube. This is myself, Daniel Rosal, and this is my tech channel where I share my interests in things related to tech over the years, quite a uh, different uh, panoply of topics, usually weird ones. This is, quite, this is actually quite a normal topic for me to be interested in, in tech, large language models and AI. And today I want to uh, do a little experiment for fun, uh, building a quick agent in open web ui uh, for getting beer recommendations because who doesn't want to have a personal beer recommendation bot sitting in their pocket that you can send a menu to and say you pick me out my beer this is this is a high point of ai it's not open ai sara and all these o1 and stuff like this it's these beer recommendation agents but i have been advocating for uh, personal context for quite a lot of time so much attention has gone in 2024 into RAG and the idea of, you know, taking massive enterprise stores of data in your CRM and in your ERP and let's vectorize that and let's make agents that can talk to your data and talk to your PDF. And, you know, very, very interesting tech, very cool use cases. But I think that we are totally overlooking how much, much smaller context can be very useful for personal use cases. Not necessarily as silly as a beer recommendation engine, but I just built a little agent for fixing my tech problems that I encounter on Linux, um, simply by providing a couple of context snippets, as I call them. This is my trademark pending term. Um, listing my hardware, talking about what I've got going on on the desktop, vectorizing those in a split second, and then I can use that to get personalized and I don't have to repeat every single time details about my hardware. The model becomes context aware. And this has been such a challenge in LLMs generally. We're seeing OpenAI just now rolling out. Wow, it can keep context across chats. But this is actually kind of a separate thing. This is taking, creating an organized and deliberate um, bank of personal context data. I'm going to show you guys how I'm using it. It may not be how everyone is leveraging this aspect of open web ui but in case it strikes your interest let me show you a little experiment and let's build more importantly our beer recommendation tool so just before we get into uh looking at beer um i want to just show you guys the uh, features that you might want to tinker around with the whole enterprise of context is a little bit complicated because it's basically taking information i mean the whole world i mean everything underlying llms is complicated night but you know they're they're numeric under the hood and they're textual above the hood and this is very much the case with um vector data in which you're putting in uh textual data and getting it converted into something that will try to show relationships vectors vectors directions connections between knowledge to enable semantic searching so it's search so that's why you have this you know really cool abilities when you get these working well to be able to not just do standard text-based keyword searching, but actually say, wow, we're really, the model really understood what I was looking for. And that's that's all this magic that happens. Now the magic is complicated. And what's nice about OpenWeb UI is it abstracts that complication a lot. Just want to show you guys a couple of configs. And I've seen people on GitHub saying, uh, the rag doesn't work and all that kind of stuff. Okay, two, two thoughts, firstly. Um, one, you don't need to use the locally hosted rag. You can use OpenAI embeddings. I did the mathematics on how much it would cost me to use the embeddings and get those done by the cloud. Not very expensive, even for like $3 for a ton of data that I wanted to put into one store. So it's not big money. And if the hardware is a constraint, uh, I would very, very strongly recommend just, you know, using op open AI, you might have privacy concerns, that's a different thing, but uh, if it's just you know a, a hardware issue, consider doing that. And second thing to say is that the default, you might wanna play around with the, think about which embedding model you're using if you are going with open AI, uh, because you don't need to go with the default one that they uh, select, which is I think the large model. I'm using text embedding ADA002 and uh, it is, uh, it seems to be working quite nicely, actually. Now, the other thing that you want might you might want to tinker with is the top K value, the minimum score value, and the uh, chunk size and the chunk overlap. These are the four parameters that you might want to play around with uh, because they might affect the ability. Um, so what I actually did was just changing around 
the these values a little bit to make the chunk size just a bit smaller. Think about the kind of stuff that you're trying to get the uh, the embedded into your knowledge and you know is it very long paragraphs or is it like little snippets of information and that might actually dictate the efficacy of the of the retrieval so that's something to look at so play around with those and and if you don't quite get it working well on the first go don't give up uh you can use anthropic actually is great i found to debug your um configuration here send it in some screenshots and say i'm not quite getting the results i was looking for can you suggest any parameters i might, I might wish to change there you go it works and just to say as well that it's, I, I really like the fact that this tool takes care of most of that for you right you don't have to the vector database comes uh installed with the docker compose it's like comes along for the right um you know on the downside i'm not sure if you're able to you probably are to connect to pinecone or something like that but if you just want to get going quickly uh you've got pretty much everything you need to just fire in some documents get those embedded somehow in some kind of database and connect that. So the knowledge base is what you're looking at here is just I'm going to suggest and just put out put out there how useful this kind of approach can be. Um, it's basically divvying up my personal context into lots of different areas so that I can connect them to certain agents. Uh, now you can see you can figure out what most of these are kind of for probably vehicle maintenance. I might create a agent called car maintenance and I might put in there my license plate um, car registration test and in fact I'll show you how easy it is to put the data in and the two ways of populating it um, you can just drag and drop or you can add it to the site and you can edit uh, the data very easily which is a huge huge value add because when we're talking about personal context for large language models a point I've made and I think again that this is grossly underexploited so much can be done with context, not just for businesses, for regular people to get really personalized AI experiences. The kind of thing that a lot of SaaS tools are selling you on, you know, we've made a movie recommendation thing with ChatGBT and blah, something magical. And you can probably replicate a lot of that by just putting in a bit of context, like what kind of movies do you like? What did you see recently? Uh, that kind of thing um, works. So that I don't only show you uh, the, the beer experiment to show you a more serious use case. So this is the desktop one that I've just kind of started uh, playing around with. Now the desktop specs that I just showed you is simply an output of my specs. And this one has been so, so useful. It's crazy. It took me literally three minutes to get my specs out of my computer. Just jot them down here. What, uh, this one is a little bit unformatted, but you know, what, uh, how much RAM do I have? And I've used this all the time for, um, using models to identify which local models I can run because I don't have an, it's not a bad uh, GPU, but I can say, this is my hardware. What do you think, can you think of a good instructional model that would run fine? Uh, it's brilliant. Um, and the second thing I added just to top that up a bit is one about my, uh, the OS, cause that of course affects uh, debugging too. So I can just kind of start this, any interaction with this model now, and it'll know I won't have to repeat any information about my background, which even if you think about conventional tech support, where you're repeating the same info every time to the tech support agent, this can actually really, really speed up the process if you're using this kind of thing multiple times per day to troubleshoot issues that you're having with your computer or your any tech device for that matter. I'm using dictation still for all these prompts, so I'm just gonna do that. Uh, Whisper AI is still working a charm, excellent Chrome extension. Um, I'm having some difficulty with Windows crashing and I'm wondering if it could be due to my uh, GPU, but I can't remember which one I have. I think it's NVIDIA. Here's a quick pro tip for you guys if you're testing out these. Uh, I know I know what my GPU is, it's AMD, and just try to throw it some curveballs, a little bit of wrong info to try to throw it off and see if it's able to correct you. Uh, if it's a robust retrieval process, it should. So I'm hoping it'll say, no, you moron, you have an AMD GPU. Um, and we can see the retrieval's working uh, there is indeed a misunderstanding and this is good. So this is what you want to see. You want to see the it getting the right information and you can see here it's retrieving uh, the context data out of its repositories and the footnotes. So if, if you guys use perplexity, it's a bit like that. It gives you sources except instead of referencing the internet in general, you're referencing your own personal context info, which is pretty cool. All right, so let's just kind of have a bit of fun here and um, I'm just going to create a quick one for demonstration purposes from scratch. As I said, let's just make one for recommending beer because, uh, you know, it'll be fun. 
Um, so I'm just going to create a knowledge base and I'm call, going to call it Daniel's Beer Preferences. Uh, and I'm trying to achieve with this uh, context about my taste in beer in order to get beer recommendations from an agent. All right, so let's just kind of jot down a few notes on the type of beer that I like. And I'm trying to provide just enough detail to steer it in certain directions if I give it a random menu, which is kind of where I'm uh, hoping to go with this. If we can get a model with vision and feed it a beer menu, that would be pretty, that would be fun. All right, so let's just get give this one a shot. I am a fan of very bitter IPAs. The more bitter they are, the better. The hoppier, the better. The higher the IBU value, the better. I also love uh, Guinness and to a lesser extent other craft stouts, although with other craft stouts, I like them not to be carbonated. I like the fact that Guinness, Guinness's level of carbonation is perfect for me and uh, I extremely dislike any attempts to add flavorings to stout. It is a terrible trend. Um, additionally, I uh, like to order my beer in a pint or half liter if i can find a liter on the menu that's brilliant i will try it and i always try to order beer on draft i will only drink beer from the bottle if there are no other options at a bar so uh this probably needs a bit of cleaning up but uh we're now hopefully going to get the uh, transcription uh thanks to you and this is uh, using whisper whisper ai chrome extension really really good and uh just a, a level beyond the kind of transcription now i actually could have used the voice input in uh, in this tool itself, which is a really nice addition. <clears throat> it's coming through the browser for free. Um, and if you want to use Whisper via the API, you can go ahead and do that. So I actually didn't need to use my extension and you don't need to use this extension if you just want to throw in your API key and use STT via Whisper, uh, all within OpenWebUI. So uh, that's my beer preferences. And just to kind of, again, model the process of entering context data. Uh, you might want to just clean it up a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna call this one uh, Daniel's Beer Advisor. Now, just to, for those of you who have come to this uh, or maybe looking at this too, like me, having played around with things like custom GPTs and open AI assistance API and the more uh, enterprise side of it. So the way that this does it is a bit different. As far as I know, it's not using assistance API and I'm pretty sure because it's using all models, and this is the big advantage, is you basically are taking a model, a baseline large language model, you're adding a system prompt, and then you're adding knowledge. And between all those three things, you're kind of replicating the agent experience in an assistance API. I don't know if it's an exact equivalent, uh, but in my experience, it's very, very close in terms of performance. So um, the base model is going to be, you know, whatever you want it to be essentially. And this is great because for, uh, one of the things that's really hard to find, of course, is I think Anthropic, Claude, excellent for tech troubleshooting. There's no native agent function really at the moment that I'm aware of in, in Claude, but I can create my own Claude agents in this platform because I can choose uh, any of the Anthropic models via OpenWriter. That's the only uh, thing The only thing you have to do is they don't have Anthropic API directly yet. So you set it up via Open Writer. So for Daniel's Beer Advisor, let us go for, well, I mean, it's, I'm just gonna throw in a ChatGBT latest here, the actual API endpoint for that, uh, just to get it kind of modern and it's a bit more expensive, but whatever, we're not gonna break the bank here, uh, running a few prompts for beer recommendations. And the system prompt, I'm you can be pretty lightweight here. Uh, it doesn't need to be, you know, it doesn't need to be fantastic. I'm just gonna get, just dictate now a basic one to add into the config. You are a, beer and cider advisor to the user daniel daniel will ask you for your recommendations for a drink based on a menu he'll either dictate the menu tell you what's on it or he'll send in a photo and when you receive the menu look through it and consider your recommendations based on daniel's preferences which you have in context now i remain a little bit in the dark as to the extent to which you need to tell the models, hey, you have your stuff in context, use that. Uh, you know, I think as this tech gets better and better, it's gonna be less and less necessary. I'm just kind of always feel like, you know, you have to kind of tell it. Uh, now here comes the important part. This is where you can attach knowledge. And just before I show this, I just want to say that. Uh, this is where it gets really, really useful in my opinion. There's a big value here. 
because you don't need to just connect one vector store. You can connect multiple vector stores. Now you might be saying this isn't revolutionary, this is in other tools and it's true, uh, but it means that you can create assistance with very wide reaching banks or personal context. You can have just one idea that I wanna throw out there is a very, very big personal context data store, maybe something like a master context data store, and then niching down for a specific use like tech troubleshooting. You might play around with it, say it's just good to have the focused one, but the fact that you can uh, segment and add little dices of your personal context for specific agents is brilliant. So in this case, I'm just actually using one, I'm just using my beer knowledge and I'm giving it vision capabilities. It, by default, it has it, uh, citations it will provide them. Um, and I'm gonna just go ahead now and create this and we can begin actually using it. All right, now let's uh, test out this thing, see if it's working. Daniel's Beer Advisor is ready for service. So uh, let us firstly try out a text prompt and then let's try a vision prompt because be, that would be much more useful and much more interesting. And when Gemini's real-time stuff comes online, you could, you could, I haven't tried this yet, you could actually use the capture functionality. They have it ready there and try to use this with your phone's camera and hold it up to a bar and say, find me a beer. They, Probably can work already. Uh, try it out if you're so motivated. Uh, I'm just going to go for the uh, regular prompt here uh, just for a beer selection. I am at a bar and the following's on the menu. Uh, can you recommend uh, which ones might be interesting to me? I've never heard of any of these beers. All right, so just retrieved some uh, random German beers I never heard about from the internet. So I don't know, you're at an airport in Germany and you're like, what is this stuff? Do I, will I like any of it? So I've just popped in there 10 random uh, German beer names. No idea, Never really never heard of any of them in fact. And it's going to now pull through my knowledge to see what I actually like any of them, thereby displaying the AI use case of, of the century. It was worth, it was worth AI just for this. Um, so there you, there you see, it's uh, firstly broken down info. I just want to also just uh, point out the different sort of things going on here um, that are maybe, you know, that are quite interesting to see it's all working together. So when you're using these assistants, you're getting really the best of both worlds. You're getting the info from training data, you can even layer on real-time info, and then your personal info. So it's finding this info about these random German beers. And then in the last part here, recommendations, this is based on what I like. Out of this list, the Zerbster Bitter Beer is your best bet, as it's bitter by name and likely by character. Test prompt number two is going to be, we're going to try the vision capabilities. Uh, so I've just got a beer menu from Google, some uh, website, and I'm just going to drop in their beer menu. And, uh, you know, this is just a beer menu, as you can see from some bar. Uh, it's got a few different options in visible here in this part of the screenshot. So um, hopefully it should guide me towards what I would most enjoy uh, out of this menu. So let's now try the prompt. I'm at a bar and I am not familiar with these beers. Uh, can you pick one I'd like, please? And again, just showing that you can use uh, context knowledge together with vision capabilities um, if the model, now the model does have to support uh, vision, uh, but ChatGPT latest will. So there you go, great recommendation. It's actually funny because I've been at this bar, to this bar and uh, Fiddle, Fiddlehead, Bre ah yes, Fiddlehead, Fiddlehead, that's the one I love. Fiddlehead is indeed great. And that's what I would have picked out of the menu. So that is pretty cool. And I think I've had their porter there too. So yeah, that is it guys. That is a demo of uh, how we quickly built a little beer recommendation model in Open Web UI. Uh, really, there's a lot to be done with personal context if you put your mind to it and think about it. I hope to get around to sort of doing some blogs and maybe videos about the different use cases, but suffice to say, there is an awful lot of way that you can drive value and personalization from using big, big, large language models with small, small bits of context data and to bring a whole new dimension to them. Thanks for watching today's video. Hope it was of interest and until the next one.